Welcome to Reef Diary, All day right, 95. So, oops. <laughs> Dropped that in the water instantly. Got my work tray up here. Got some glue, putty, towel, and uh, some forceps. I probably need some kind of bone cutters as well, but I'll be working in the reef and you can kind of watch. The first thing I did was stop all the flow in the tank because I want to look through the surface and see what I'm doing. In addition to doing that, I can move the light rack slightly out of my way to get better access. And I use one of my smartphone floaters to look through, which are basically like surface goggles for me to look down when there's an area like where the lights reflect off the water and it just obscures your entire vision. So the first thing I want to do is fix my dendros that had somehow got bumped loose yesterday. So they're going to get replanted on the rock where I had them before because that's where I want them to be. The two glues or things that I like to use to secure my frags are going to be the premium coral glue from Polyp Labs as well as the Aquascape construction epoxy from DD the Aquarium Solution. I've been using the Polyp Labs glue now for probably the last two years but I've been using the DD Aquascape putty for probably a decade maybe 15 years. My normal approach for planting corals on the reef if it's going to be the glue is to take them out of the water and blot them on a towel to dry off the base put a big old blob of glue on there and then lower it into the tank and put it into place. I may lift it up and push it down and lift it up and kind of wiggle it a little bit to kind of create some kind of like a, a web of glue so it grabs onto the rock. And then I'll hold it for about 30 seconds, maybe even as much as 60 seconds. And after that, I can wave my hands nearby and make sure that it stays in position. I also want to rearrange these acans because the biggest one is in the front blocking the view of the other ones and I might as well change the order and get a better looking color palette so these three things will look perfect side by side. I would really like to have an acan garden just filled up with polyps. That would be amazing. And who knows, maybe this time I'll be able to pull it off. I'm going to just have to really focus on either getting more and more or make sure these guys grow really, really big. While my hands are in the water, I also went ahead and I pulled out a couple of skeletons that I saw that had fallen into the reef when I was doing cleanup. So I retrieved those to get them out of the way. And then there's a big old branch here that I saw on the other side of the sea bay. And I'm going to use it as a barrier between the sea bay and the Duncans because the sea bay has definitely moved over a few inches and is really encroaching upon them. And I'd rather not lose the Duncan polyps because I'm being lazy. As I reach in, I basically move the sea bay out of my way and I can feel the sticky tentacles, which is a good sign. And then once I've got a gap, I go ahead and I put that big old branch in there, which is kind of lumpy bumpy and hope it'll be a little bit of an obstacle to kind of make the anemone decide I'm gonna not quite lean over this far. If you'll look in the upper left corner, you'll notice I'm using the viewer to kind of look around in the water and make sure I have a game plan of what I'm going to do next. I also was looking for some of the newer frags that are lying in the rock work to determine where I'm going to put them next in the reef. One of the things you really want to do as you plant the corals is make them complement each other by putting opposing colors near each other. And that's a really tricky one for me. I'm not good at it. And so I'm constantly trying to double check and verify that I'm making the right choice of where I'm going to put something. One of the coral fragments had kind of fallen through the rock work and you could see the plug from underneath. So I put my hand underneath to push it up and out of that hole so I could go ahead and retrieve it now. And it will be the second thing that I plant in the reef, which will be near another similar coral because they're the exact same one. So I want to put two side by side to kind of make it look like a bigger bunchy area. During the next 15 minutes or so, I planted quite a few corals, but the angle is really not good for you to see. So I'm going to go ahead and change the edit here to give you a different angle that you can look at and kind of see a little bit more action and not just wonder what's going on off in the distance. However, I am actually trying to place a coral in one spot and I'm trying to decide how to do it. I'm also holding it up against the rock work to see how can I affix it because I really like that spot. And in this specific case, this little colony I got from Dwayne has a frag plug on the bottom and there's like this half round spot on the edge of the rock that I felt like if I used putty on the outside, I could kind of encircle it and bond it to the rock work. So what I can do is on one side of the frag plug, let's call it the left side, I put the glue that would hold it to the rock. And on the right side, I put a big blob of putty that encircles the whole thing. The glue grabs onto the rock and that putty kind of shoves it in and reinforces around the perimeter uh, that would be normally floating over air. Whether you're working with glue, but more specifically when you're working with putty, you can see all that stuff that's released into the water column. 
This is a really good thing to keep in mind when you're planting corals, not to plant too many on the same day. The more of the epoxy that's in the ecosystem, the more problems you have with the protein skimmer later on because it definitely affects it. So it's best to work on a little bit of the reef each day and kind of let the skimmer take out that little bit and then the next day plant a few more and so on. And this, you know, it scales up. Even with huge tanks, you can't go crazy. You gotta keep it in mind. Tonight's session, I used an entire package of the putty, which isn't a lot. If I used two or three boxes of it, that would have been a big deal. Here's a blue tort that I'm trying to decide where I'm gonna place it. And I'm gonna use the exact same principle, glue on one side and putty around the back side to make it grab onto the rock. The thing about the putty that I like so much is that you can press it around and use it, you know, like Play-Doh, and you can put it everywhere and you can really tuck it into the crevices and add a little bit more reinforcement and kind of really build up a barrier all the way around the base to keep it secure. If you do a really good job, it'll stay. And the nice thing is if you have to move it later, it does break away. It's not like concrete. So you do have some flexibility in the future. So as soon as I've got it secured, I wave my hand to make sure the coral isn't moving and dissipate a little bit of that, let's call it glue toxin, and I'm able to go on to the next one. The orange millie was the next one I tried to figure out, and what I mean by is where can I put it? I know where it was, and it was actually a good spot, but it was a little bit low. But I thought, is there a better place anywhere where it would look better in the reef? And after all my different attempts, I decided, nope, I like it right where it is. I just need to secure it a little bit better in the rock work this time. Because it was just resting, and I wanted to be locked in so it'll grow nicely. With each coral, you basically have to assess how you want to secure it. And I felt, again, in this situation, the best choice is going to be putty. So sometimes I use only glue, and sometimes I use putty. This may seem repetitive, but I'm hoping this will help you a little bit as you're also working your tank because you're wondering, well, which is better? Sometimes you need one or the other. Sometimes you need both. Sometimes you have to make an Oreo sandwich of the stuff to make it really all hold together. When I plant something, if it doesn't feel secure, or even if I bump it while I'm working the tank and it seems a little loose again, I may add more putty, I may put more pressure on the putty to kind of really fill the crevices in, or I may put more glue. So it's never a one and done situation. You may need to go back and deal with it a few more times over the next few minutes. You have time to work with everything. The glue doesn't dry instantly and the putty doesn't turn hard instantly either. You'll notice in this moment, it's really not holding on well. I've even removed it and pushed it back into place, kind of readjusting how it's bonding into the putty itself. It's really best to work with two hands and not just with one. I uh, was trying to keep the other hand out of the way so you could see what I'm doing. But if you use both hands, you can apply pressure, you can hold the rock stable in one hand as you're working the frag with the other and not smush your aquascape and make everything start tumbling downward. Now that I'm done with that one, the next frag I want to play with is this little guy, I believe it's the Walt Disney. And it has a black frag plug on the bottom that was very hard. I couldn't even cut it. So I took it to my wet saw and I cut off most of the stump and left a little bit of the base and put a huge blob of glue underneath it and then pressed it onto the rock where I wanted it to be. The very hairy green acro I got from Terra Reef, it kind of rocks back and forth. It's a very large base. And I felt if I put a piece of putty under the left side to kind of fill in the void, it would help keep this coral in place. Each time I mix up putty, I break off, I don't know, three quarters of an inch of each part and combine them. And once it's all one uniform color, which is hot pink, <laughs> then I'll go ahead and break it in half and use half and have another half handy. I don't want to pre-mix too much putty. The next piece I attached was a type of Montipora that I got from Duane. And I went ahead and put a big, huge blob of glue on it. And I'm trying to secure it to a dead area of what used to be Sunset Montipora on the front of my reef. I needed to secure this one because it keeps moving, the flow keeps blowing it around, and so I've got to actually bolt it down so I use some glue, and hopefully this one will stay where I've placed it. But rather than rely on that glue, I went ahead and grabbed another piece of that putty, and I'm gonna put it underneath the shelf to kind of add a little bit more surface for that coral to rest upon. Planting corals takes time. This isn't something you can rush and you gotta work on them one at a time and it may take you one to two minutes per coral to get them exactly right. And even then, things may change or you may have to go in later and fix it. But if you can get the majority of them secured and in place, they're gonna grow really well. And then if you have to occasionally deal with one or two loose guys, you can do that easily. 
I next spotted a scroll coral that Dwayne had sent me, which was actually sitting up under the shadow caster, and somehow the flow knocked it down. So I tried to put it in this spot here, but it actually won't stay there like that. It wouldn't just magically lay there. That'd be too easy. So later on, I'm going to go ahead and secure that again with some glue in a different spot, slightly to the left. The next spot I addressed was this area where I had a little bit of living tissue left of the yellow scroll coral that had mostly died off. So I removed both of these chunks and then I took them to the wet saw and I cut away all the dead skeleton and saved the little, the little bit of living part, which we planted elsewhere in the reef. And I'm gonna put a much prettier Monty in this spot that's got that green with blue polyps. And I hope that it'll be a nice contrast against the hammers and the sea bay and the maize coral. This is a really nice piece and it's kind of big. And I needed to use quite a bit of glue. I actually put glue in two different areas to try and get it to hold onto the rock. And hopefully it'll stay in place and I won't have to touch it again. The You can handle corals, but we don't want to keep grabbing it and mashing the polyps with our fingertips. So the idea is to get it in there, get it secure, and move on. And don't touch it again as soon as you possibly can. This particular coral did not really want to go in there instantly. It wanted to mess with me and mess with my time and take forever. But I did apply more and more glue. I kept rearranging how it was sitting on the rock. I was trying to make sure it doesn't rock back and forth, but kind of hugs, you know, in the right indentations until I finally found what I felt to be the right combination. If you think it's difficult placing corals in your tank, try filming it. <laughs> it's even worse then. But uh, no, seriously, it, it, it went in there fine. It just took a little bit of time to figure out the ideal spot and now it's, it's done. I can leave it alone. Hopefully it'll be amazing and I'll be taking tons of pictures of this coral. I love my little work tray. Here's all the scraps and the shrapnel I found in there and the glue tips and all the leftover trash. I can just throw it up there as I'm working. And then when I'm all said and done, I can just take it away and go wash it up. All right, that's it for now. I just finished working in the tank and I'm not gonna do any more tonight because I want to not use too much putty or glue in the water volume that could affect things adversely. I planted a few of the corals that need to be planted. There was a couple that were just kind of sitting in places. There was a couple others. I altered the way they were to make them fit where I needed them to be. And then there's uh, quite a few little frags I still need to plant um, that will happen in the, you know, in, during this next week. I hope you enjoyed watching some of this. I'm gonna go ahead and keep picking glue off my fingers for the next hour. <laughs> and I hope you have a great night and I'll see you again tomorrow.